clavicular fractures are one of the most widespread traumatic lesions in sports. They are even more frequent in cyclists, and in the last years there is more and more increasing the incidence of this kind of lesion in cyclists, both professionals or amateurs. Why do the clavicle or collarbone has a so high incidence in cyclists and how to interpret and to indicate the correct treatment in order to have a good and quick recovery in case of this fracture? This is the topic of this video. Good morning everyone, I am Stefano Teramo and this is Orthostrike. During my career I had the opportunity and the privilege to treat surgically many professional athletes, such as professional cyclists. In this case it's a pleasure for me to mention the case of the professional Australian cyclist Chris Hamilton of DSN team, which I operated at Clydeville some months ago. He is a teammate of another professional cyclist I recently operated, it is the 20 years old Scottish DSN cyclist Oscar Olin, who suffered a collarbone fracture during the last Spain Vuelta. Then I recently operated at Clavicle another young 20 years old cyclist, the Ethiopian Kia Rogora, professional at Education First team. We see him in this picture, not only with me, but of course, and above all, with his colleague, another professional cyclist from Ethiopia, Sabu Germain. In order to treat such as a high level athletes, it's mandatory to have a standardized and as more safe as possible surgical technique that allows to reach quick and safe recovery and to come back to the sport in a good condition as fast as possible. So it's time to focus our attention to this kind of lesions of frequent and relevant in sportsmen, above all in cyclists. The clavicle or collarbone is a long bone positioned between the proximal part of the breastbone and the acromion, that is a apical region of the scapula. The clavicle just with the scapula constitutes the middle aspect of the scapulohumeral chain. The macroscopic aspect of the clavicle remembers the shape of an S with a double curve, a medial one that is convex on the anterior aspect and a lateral curve that is prominent and convex posteriorly. Due to this localization of the structure, the clavicle is quite predisposed to break under a lateral lateral compression stress. It has to force the supply in the shoulder when we fall on one side or the other and we have an impact on the lateral aspect of the shoulder. This impact usually transmits a stress, a mechanical stress and energy over the acromioclavicular joint and it may finally hesitate in a clavicular fracture or, in other cases, in a acromioclavicular luxation or displacement. There is another kind of lesion that we'll see in detail in a future video of Autostrike, in which there is a soft tissue tear, a lesion of the ligaments that makes to lose the correct congruence between the clavicula and the acromion, with the luxation of this joint. But we'll talk about these in another occasion because the treatment is quite different from the one we'll see for clavicular fractures. A clavicular fracture may happen in different localization on the medial part near to the breastbone or on the diaphysis, the mid portion of the clavicle, or more usually on the mid lateral portion of the clavicle. In these cases, we orthopedic surgeons must pay attention to which is the correct treatment in order to get a good and fast recovery for any patient. Also in case of clavicular fracture, the correct treatment is not a standardized general correct, not correct treatment. It depends from a specific assessment patient by patient, depending from factors such as age and above all functional activity and functional demand. Of course, in a patient with a young age and with a higher performance and higher functional demand, above all if it's a sport athlete, we are prompt to consider a surgical treatment in order to get a faster and better recovery from a functional point of view. Another criteria we must take into account is the structure of the fracture and the morphology of the lesion because a fracture of the clavicle may be not displaced or displaced. And in case of displacement, it may be an ad latus with a lateral movement of the fracture fragments or a shortened fracture with a ad longitudinal displacement. 
In this case, we have a shortening of the bone axis of the clavicle. Another kind of displacement we may observe is the adduction displacement with an angulation of the fragments and the evidence of a curve that alterates the biomechanics of clavicle and above all of a chronic clavicular joint. In this occasion, it's worth to remember how most clavicular fractures have the tendency to heal spontaneously by a primary healing of the bone with callous bony consolidation. Even though it's really crucial to consider the risk of a long-term negative effect on the biomechanics of the cranioclavicular joint due to the risk of shortening of the clavicular axis. In these cases, there is an impairment of the muscular tendons action over the region and a limitation of the muscle strength in the long-term activity of the patient with the possible persistence of some tenderness or limitation during sports activities. And the presence of this potential risk is the crucial aspect we have to assess when to decide if to suggest a patient a surgical or conservative treatment. Is there any room for conservative treatment in clavicular fractures? The answer is yes, sometimes, just for specific patients. We may resume mentioning the pediatric population, it does too. Children, children have a great healing response at bone, especially the clavicle has a great capacity to heal, even though we may have a moderate displacement, mostly we indicate conservative treatment for a great portion of pediatric clavicular fractures. Another sector of population in which we may indicate conservative treatment is the not displaced clavicular fracture. When there is not malalignment of the segments of the fracture, we may proceed with conservative treatment. And finally, we may try to treat the fracture conservatively in patients that have not a great displacement at the lesion and have not a great functional demand, both for age or for low physical activity. The conservative treatment in these cases is constituted by three weeks of protection of the upper limb with a cast or a bondage, we call it eight bondage due to its configuration that remembers the number eight and that allows us to stabilize the fracture and to provide enough time to have a beginning of bony consolidation at the fracture focus. Then we progressively remove the cast and the start rehabilitation program with recovery of range of motion by manual therapy, both in abduction and external internal rotation. Furthermore, we will have to improve muscle strengthness by exercise at scapulous humeral chain. Even though the times for recovery in case of conservative treatment are quite slow and sensibly longer than surgical treatment because we require almost two months in order to come back to low-grade sports activities and something more between three and four months in order to come back to direct impact on contact sports. That is one of the factors that in most cases induces us, orthopedic surgeon, to suggest a surgical treatment to the patients, above all when they are young and high demand sports athletes. And in this case, we'll try to provide the fracture a stabilization by reduction, it does good positioning of the bony fragments, and stabilization by osteosynthesis, that is an internal fixation with metal wires, such as mostly the cases plate locked with screws. But we'll talk about that in the next video of Autostra. Let me catch this opportunity to remember to who of you may be interested that I'm available for online visits and consultation through my website www.stefanotelamo.com or by the Doctoralia portal www.doctoralia.es. That's all for this episode. Thank you for your attention and appointment to you for the next Auto Strike video. Thanks a lot and bye bye. Sometimes I fall and rise, you know 
Santa will fly so far away too.